guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. In today's episode, we'll be taking a look at the game Steam Code by Stefano Lozano. It plays two to six players, it takes about an hour to play and is for ages 13 and up. And in Steam Code, you're going to be playing as extraordinary characters throughout history. And your objective is to go around Jonathan Steam's laboratory in search for the missing code for his time machine. As you move around the lab, you're going to try and acquire the codes for your specific number lock in order to unlock the ability to use the time machine. However, there are many other extraordinary characters from time that are also trying to find Jonathan Steam's secret combination for themselves, like Dave Campbell, Darius Delante, Michael Gorey, Katrina, Stefano Di Brescia, uh, Bree Walker, and so on and so forth. A ton of different characters. And they're all going to have their own unique abilities to go throughout the lab and gather the codes. If you can gather the code, get to your specific area on the map, and then acquire the code by putting it down onto a little piece of paper here and checking it to make sure you're right, you'll win the game. However, if you guess wrong, you're stuck in time for eternity and the rest of the players will have their advantage or attempt to be able to find the code as well. Can you find Jonathan Steam's specific code for his time machine? Let's find out in the game Steam Code down below. So here we have the game Steam Code. Now I'm going to go ahead and talk about all the components in the game and then we'll go ahead and show you the setup followed by how to play at least a couple turns of the game. Now firstly you're going to notice that there are two decks of cards. You're going to have this lore deck over here as well as this deck over here which is for the inventions in the game. This board here is basically Jonathan Steam's lab and each player is going to have their own space based on color as far as their codes go, as well as where to place their top hats, which is their character figure. To begin the game, just simply go ahead and give every single player one of these fantastical characters. We have an example of two players right now, so I went ahead and have Aru the Eternal and Dave Campbell. There is many more to choose from, but we're going to go ahead and set these aside for now. And then we're also going to give each player a color. They have a top hat, and they're going to place that top hat on the color of the triangular space in the middle of the board, along with yellow and, of course, orange. And then you're going to go ahead and remove all the rest of the top hats that you're not playing with for all the rest of the players that could play and they can play up to six players. This is the rule book but I'm going to explain the game so you won't need that as well to look at for right now. And then of course these are the time codes here. You're going to shuffle this deck up and this deck has from zero to nine numbers that you're going to basically put randomly on the board in these time spaces along the outside edges of the game board. After you do that then all of the spaces should be filled and all of the rest of these little pieces are not going to be needed as well. Make sure you've shuffled both decks and dealt out three cards to each player. And all the cards in the game are going to either be instant actions that can happen, such as like nopes and whatnot, as well as some traps that you can ensue on other players, and then there are basic action cards that you can play on your turn. So go ahead and set them aside next to the players, as well as their board, and these little tokens here, which will allow you to have actions for it. And that's pretty much the entire setup of the game. Make sure you have this little codex here, so that way people, when they guess their codes, they'll be able to take that and try and hopefully solve the, 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 the Steam code for the ability to take the time machine and use it for their own devices, right? So let's go ahead and take it down below. I will show you how how to play the game, I'll explain the rounds and your actions and whatnot, and then we'll come up and we'll do a review. Me and Grant will explain what we think about the game. So here we have a two-player setup for Steam Code. Every single player has their character boards as well as their abilities. They've got three cards in hand, and their little top hats or characters are in the middle of the board based on their color. All the time codes are out, and they're basically just trying to solve their own unique code, because each player has their own unique code. So for instance, if the backs of these were 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, then this orange player is going to need to find his code, which would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 0. And yellow would need to find his, which would be 3, 4, 5, 0, 1, and 2. And as you can see, each player has their own unique codes, but it's based on these. It just has to happen based on the color of the space where your codes are located. And in order to win the game, you're going to need to go on that specific space that is of your color, and then you're going to have a chance to guess, kind of like Clue. You have to figure out where your code is. But if not, you can go around the board and just simply flip them over, revealing them to yourself and remembering them. Now, let's go ahead and begin a round for the game. The first thing that's going to happen is everybody's got their three cards, and you're going to choose a first player. You're going to take this die and roll it, and whoever gets the highest number will go ahead and go first, or maybe the person who maybe invented something the latest or who made something. Regardless, we'll have yellow go first. 
So every player other than yellow will place a card from their hand face down based on if it's a trap. So it has to be a trap in order to place it down. If it has just a top hat or just a top hat and one of these little clock symbols, you can't place it down. So for instance, Orange would go ahead and place one card from his or her hand face down and anybody else would do so as well. Then in clockwise order from the left of the current player, they're going to reveal the, their cards and basically they're going to do whatever they say. For instance, this one says the active move the active player's pawn to an adjacent space. So in this case, uh, orange is going to move yellow into an adjacent space. This might not be the best card to play, but regardless, it's a trap and that's how they work. After everybody's traps have went off, then this player will get to take their turn. And on a player's turn, they'll get to take three actions. One action is to play an action card from your hand. As long as it has a top hat, you can go ahead and play that. Another action you can take is on your board. However, you can only take one of these actions once per turn. So you can't take both of them as two actions, regardless of what the board says, only one. And they all have a different activation cost as well as unique ability. The last thing you can do, and probably the most important, is move. Like I said, three actions. So technically you can move three spaces on your turn, as long as you don't play cards or use your ability of your character. On the board here, you can't move through these little holes in the lab. And additionally, whenever you walk onto one of these little laboratory spaces or invention spaces, you're going to need to th flip over one of these unique random cards, like Steam Slot. And then it'll make you do something like roll the die and gain or lose actions. Or perhaps you're gonna choose a player and randomly take one of their cards. Different things that can be beneficial or not. Whenever you're um, in a space that has the specific code number, you can go ahead and look at it without using an action, place it face down and reserve it to memory. And then of course, after you've taken your three actions, whatever they might be, the next player in turn order will get a chance to go after everybody has played their traps down if they want. Don't forget at the end of your turn, you're gonna draw two cards from this deck here and put them into your hand. So you're hopefully not gonna run out of cards anytime soon, but there are cards that can make you lose your hand, usually with some type of benefit. This player will take a turn now. Maybe he'll go ahead and play a card from his hand. Let's see, add the first two trap cards from the discard pile to my hand. Eh, there's only one in there right now, so I'll save that. And whenever an invention is about to be revealed, take a peek at it, and you can put that invention at the bottom of the deck in top of it. So that might be useful as well, but I won't do that. I'll simply just move my three spaces. One, two, I'll stop here, flip over one of these cards here. All players draw a card, not too bad. And then a final action to move once again. And that's basically how it works. You're going to go around and eventually gather all of the numbers, hopefully, and then get back to your space of your color and guess. And if you can guess before anybody else, you win the game. If you guess incorrectly, you're out of the game and the rest of the players will have a chance. If there's only one player left or no, if there's only one player left, that player is likely going to win. But if there's no players, nobody can guess it, then nobody wins the game of Steam Code, the game of deduce, deduction, I suppose as well as a little bit of take that. So let's come up, we'll discuss the game with Grant, see what game, whether this game is something right for you or not, and where to pick it up on Kickstarter. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about Steam Code and what we both think about it. Here I have Grant with me to discuss the positives and negatives of the game, and basically the most important thing is what audience this game is going to go for. Mm -hmm. Now, let's talk about the theming first. This game is a game in which it has the theme punk aspect to it. Steampunk? Yeah, right? It's basically going to be going through the different dimensions or time, and you're trying to find this code so that you're able to move throughout time, I suppose, with all these different fantastical characters here. Yeah, you're trying to get the, the Steam code to unlock the time machine, so that's pretty self-explanatory. The, the theme comes through in the cards, you know, the steampunk theme. It's kind of unique having a time machine in steampunk, but... Uh... Yeah, is Time Machine actually like a steampunk aspect? I feel like it kind of fits in a little bit. I mean, if you go by the, what was it, the Orson Welles, the Time Machine? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's the only example I can think of of a, a Time Machine and steampunk. Otherwise, they're more like sci-fi, huh? Yeah, they're more sci-fi usually. And you're basically just going around a laboratory attempting to figure out these codes and everybody else mm -hmm. is kind of racing along. It does feel kind of like a race, right? Oh, it's a race for sure. And not only is it a race, but it also has a bit of a take that mechanic. And in fact, not just a bit, quite a bit of... It's huge take that. <laughs> quite a bit of take that. Because there is a lot of randomness in this game. Yep. There are these, these cards here, which are the invention cards. Mm -hmm. which will let you do certain things, like all players have to discard a card, discard well, your entire hand. certain things happen to you. Yeah, discard your entire, entire hand and then draw two cards. 
Uh, what else do we have? Swap your entire hand with another player at random. Uh, what else? Draw an extra card during the cleaning the lab phase. So instead of drawing two, you draw three. And end the turn and jump directly to the cleaning the lab phase, which is Actually, just draw just, cards. Your, your turn's over and you just start drawing cards. So because of that, then as you can see, there's just a wide variety of things that can happen to you. They might give you an extra action and they might take away an action or move your character. They all, they just do a bunch of random stuff. Uh, if you all had the exact same actions, the game would function where the first player just wins, right? Well, well, it depends on what the other actions are, because you could push somebody back. Sure, but if it was just movement alone. Yeah, just movement so alone. what changes the game a lot is basically the cards that you play on people, which are traps. Well, actually, actually, it's a memory game, so the first player might not even win. That's true, and I we, we played the advanced mode the first time we played this game, and it's challenging having to remember the numbers. I don't know about for you, but for me, I constantly had to keep the numbers in the back of my head and then keep the order, because the order can change in the game. Yeah, the best part was when I was switching the numbers. Oh, I hated that. It was like, it was, so it's not necessarily that I hate it, like, like, like in the sense of like, I hate the game because of it, but that aspect of having to try and mess with your brain and rearrange the numbers is super challenging. It keeps you very tense and on edge throughout the entire game, uh, at least for me. Yeah, I mean, video? the code's easy when it's one, two, three, four, five, six, but when it's one, five, three, two, four, six, you know. And then I switch three and six. And now you have to rearrange that and remember it. And One, so because five, of that... Six, four, two, three. And I hope. then when you're playing with more players, it can do that even more, which is crazy. The game can get really intense with the more players that you put with this game. It has a lot of the take deck mechanics, the traps that can happen to you. The traps generally are... They go from somewhat debilitating to extremely debilitating. Mm -hmm. From anywhere from lose an action to lose two actions. Or you can only take one movement action on your turn those kind of things can be very nasty but there's also cards in the deck that will let you nope the cards like ah oh, you can't do that to me but when you're playing with a lot of players yeah there, there's a couple combinations that can that can be really harmful like you need only need one and then you go back to your nope. everyone goes back to their starting space then you get back to your final one and someone switches it on you then you gotta go all the way across the board. There's there are some cards in the in this deck here that make players go back to the beginning of the board. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Yeah, that it's very rare uh, that I looked as I looked. I think there's only one, maybe two in the entire deck. But when mm -hmm. that happens, you have to be like, I would I, as soon as that happened to me, I was like, oh no. Uh, next turn I was gonna have it all, but as soon as that happened, I have to keep the number numbers in my head. Hopefully he doesn't change the combination. No, and he did, and then move it to the end. But it's very satisfying when you get to the end of the game and you're able to remember the combination and you get there before anybody else. You've not only won the race, but you've successfully accomplished your goal of remembering the numbers at the end of the race because winning the race isn't the entire point to this mm -hmm. game. You have to be able to understand the code, keep it in memory, and your code is unique to anybody else's. Maybe just by one number. Uh, as far as sequence goes, but yeah. it's enough to, to mess with you and the other players as well. Uh, so that's the that's the game mechanics. How about we talk about the uh, specific unique player powers the game a little bit? Like mine was well the first one I played, so that's the one I remember the most is the one where you it doesn't cost you an action, but it does cost you a cog, and I can take a card from your hand. Yeah, very powerful. And then yours? Uh, mine was for one action and a cog. I could. Uh, any any time I spent an action on moving, I could move one extra space, which usually only meant I moved one extra space. Yeah, the you need to move one extra. But one time I hit like an extra action, so I got to move six spaces, which is pretty pretty good. Both of them, all the powers are actually very strong. So one says an action and a counter. Choose a player and swap their hand with yours. Wow. Yeah. One of them is no actions and can negate a revealed invention. Discard a card. Use another character's power without paying for its activation cost. It's one action and one counter. So there's one that's like mm -hmm. a wild. A zero actions plus one counter lets you draw two cards from the, what is it, lore deck? Is that what it's called? Uh, tempo deck. Tempo. I keep calling it lore deck, but it's a tempo deck. Also, there's this die in the game, which adds some randomization, but it's actually not used all that much. It's no, used there's, for there's first player and cards, cards, cards that are like... Uh, roll a six-sided dice, and if you get a one to two, you lose two actions. If you get a three or four, you lose one action. And if you get a five to six, nothing happens. Quality? Uh, quality's all right. It's a prototype, right? Yeah, it is yeah. a prototype, so 
obviously it's going to improve immensely i imagine when yeah. the campaign is done i always say that you know who, who I mean, knows for a prototype the quality is fine so yeah this game it's based on just having it as it is the the cute little hats are super nice the little cog wheels are exactly what i would expect i imagine they'll probably be some type of wooden feature uh hardened plastic uh these little player boards they work perfectly for what you need yep. it tells you and gives you a little bit of lore on the character has a nice little back coding of steam code and then of course it has your action and then all the cards have some you know, unique artwork that works really well sack of wonders and all kinds of different little things slot machines they all have that steampunk art to it and i really do like it i like the board as well i think it's really well made uh art's really nice as well and, put your pumps in cages the the dreaded nope card yeah yeah but overall quality is nice artwork is in my opinion very nice as well i really mm -hmm. like the artwork for this game i think they did an excellent job of that uh some negatives i suppose would be there's a lot of randomness to the game yeah. so you, you get huge swings both positive and negative which may or may not be a, a negative depending on who's playing the game or whatever like well, your uncle would love this game right there's yeah probably randomness. probably but uh, you know the, the one player who's getting all of the luck is gonna like it and the one player who's who's losing all of the luck like I, one, one game i lost my hand three times it's very hard to, to do things when, oh, okay, well, I'm back to two cards. You have all of the code memorized in order, and then you're one turn away from getting the code, and one of the cards from the invention deck makes you go back to the start space. Which no, means the worst, the worst the one is when you're one away, and someone switches it on the other side of the board. Oh, moves the code away. Yeah. Yeah, that can be nasty that, as that, well. That's worse, because now you have to go all the way across the board. And power creep. I mean, there's certain cards that are obviously way more powerful than others. Discarding your hand to look at two codes is very, very nice. Yeah. So that that that's probably one of the ma major things I think you guys have to understand. But I think other than that, that's like the main thing that I think people are going to have to be like, decide, make a decision on this game is based on, do they like a lot of randomness to the game? Do they like memory? Because this is a memory game. You can, of course, go the easy route, which is just writing it down. Yeah. Uh, which takes a little bit out of the game, I would say. That yeah. whole frustration. But then again, some the... people would never play memory games. So. Yeah. So you don't have to do it that way if you don't want to. And you can simply write it down. And when, when things change, you just rechange the numbers and write it down mm -hmm. that way. And I guess it's still possible to mess it up, especially if people are moving the numbers around. I would say yeah, in a you larger lose track player, of one, one switch and then you're, you're wrong. Especially if you're playing with more players. The yep. more players in this game, the more frantic and the more crazy it's going to get. And probably the length will, is going to increase quite a bit as well. But in a two-player or three-player experience, it's rather quick. I mean, it goes through pretty fast as well. As, as long as you don't get any returns back to start or moving the codes in different areas. Um, overall, I really enjoyed this game, provided that I, I was prepared for the amount of randomness and chance that was going to occur throughout the game. There's certain aspects where I was like a little bit frustrated due to the fact that I wanted to do a certain thing and I couldn't do it because one of the cards stopped me or he played a card that debilitated me in some way, sometimes really debilitating and other times mm, just a little bit debilitating. But overall, if you like random games with memory attached to it, take that aggressive Com com competitive variants yep. you're going to enjoy steam code especially if you like a steampunk style game yeah i agree and do you have anything else to say about it really i mean it wasn't really my cup of tea it's too random and too take that for me but yeah. those are those aren't the kind of games i like so but, but do you i see think... how people would like it if that if that's what they're into so like i guess that's why i say your uncle this is kind of a game that yeah I my, my uncle likes games that are heavily reliant on luck so if we if we were to rate this it'd be like from zero to five on luck it'd probably be like a three or four maybe uh I'd, I'd put it like four and a half. Four and a half. That, that's like the, the the amount of luck that my, my, my uncle likes all the, the complete luck games, you know. But quality, components, artwork, all of it really solid. The memory aspect of the game is a lot of fun, uh, if potentially frustrating for certain people, and of course, just the luck factor. Yeah. But regardless, if this sounds like the game for you, then you should definitely take a look at it down below. It'll be on Kickstarter, uh, I guess, maybe a couple days after this video is posted, right. maybe a week. I don't know. Uh, I'll put it on there right now. I'll put a link in the description down below where you can take a look at the game Steam Code and decide for yourself whether you want to pick this little steampunk, take that racing style game up for yourself. I had your collection. Yeah. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Steam Code, which will be up on Kickstarter in the description in the link below. If you're interested in taking a look at this game, go ahead and click that button and decide for yourself if it's the game for you. You can also go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. Blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. We're giving away the game Return to the Dark Tower. It'll probably be 
maybe up for another day or two by the time this is done and we'll have something else up there for you as well we have a live stream every wednesday on facebook at 7 30 p.m no 6 30 p.m pst up to 9 30 but it changes it varies sometimes we do it less or more time regardless we give away games there live on the stream as well as play games just like this one down below for you guys to take a look at we got a large community that follow us and they all participate we do a lot of audience participation we do rpgs we paint things all kinds of fun stuff that you guys can participate in as well uh, we'd love for you to go ahead and check us out thank you so much for watching and as always i hope that you will visit the laboratory of jonathan steam and help me concoct the code for the time machine next time <laughs>